Hello, NOSA community. It's Shamika, your group creator, moderator of the NOSA group, and welcome. So I'm jumping in here a little bit early. So if you're free and you want to jump online with me a little bit early, feel free to do so. Um, you can check me out here on the Facebook Live in the Facebook group. And you can also check me out because I'm going to be going live in Clubhouse too. And our Clubhouse tagline is, hey, Angela, at T-H-E-N-O-S-A-G-R-P. So I'm going to be there as well. We're going to try to do some multitasking today and see how things go. Um, hi, Leah. Definitely bear with me as um, there might be some technical difficulties, but I think I kind of got it figured out. Um, and we'll be able to get things going. So just to start us out, welcome. Welcome to all the new members. Um, it is January. Let me double check what today is. January. <laughs> you know you were busy when it's only been three days in January and you can't even keep up. It's January 3rd. So again, happy new year to everybody. I hope everybody's new year is starting off well. Um, welcome to the group for our new members who are just joining us. We're glad you're here. We're an amazing, growing, thriving community. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Karen um, of Healthcare Professionals. So even though the name of the group, just so that you guys know, is Nurse on Staffing Agency, um, there are quite a few healthcare professionals and other professions that are part of the group. So I'm excited to have you guys here. And also, you don't kind of have to be a nurse or a healthcare professional to join the group. So that's not a prerequisite. The name came from, hi Phyllis, me trying to figure out something cute. NOSA worked. So I stick with it, but I definitely don't limit um, it to just nurses. So, um, while well, I give everybody a chance to come in, definitely come in, say hi, let us know where you're from. Feel free to also um, share any social media, um, start thinking about questions that you might have because how this session is going to work tonight is I'm going to answer the most frequently asked questions. And then I'm going to give you guys an opportunity here on Facebook Live as well as um, Clubhouse because I'm about to jump into Clubhouse. The opportunity to ask your own questions. Hi, Nikita. And um, that's kind of how we're going to keep the conversation going. Um, if you have friends who are in the group or people you know in the group who aren't connected, tell them they can check us out here in the group or on Clubhouse. So I'm not sure how Clubhouse is going to work, but we're going to try and do it both just because I know people are in different places and have different access. Hi, Imani. Um, so bear with me. So I'm going to jump onto Clubhouse. Um, I'm going to give them a welcome and an intro. Hi, Taisha. And we're going to get started. I only have 10 frequently asked questions. So the session is set up for a whole hour. So you guys make sure after I'm done talking my head off that you have some questions for me as well. Hopefully I'll get a chance to answer all of them. If not, as always, we'll definitely be open to doing it again. Hi, Ramona. So all right, so just give me one second and we're going to jump onto Clubhouse for all of those who want to join us on Clubhouse. Feel free to do so and we're going to get things started. So um, in Clubhouse, the name of the session is a Q&A, how to create a profitable healthcare staffing agency. So for all my people in Clubhouse, my name is Shamika. I am the group creator and moderator of the Nurse Own Staffing Agency. And today we're going to be talking about how to start your healthcare staffing agency and create a profitable healthcare staffing business. And we're going to give everybody a chance to jump in a little bit. I'm doing this in, um, in addition to doing it here on Clubhouse. I'm also doing it on a Facebook Live. So definitely, if you have any questions you want to hear, and I'll share the questions um, on both platforms so people can hear them. And uh, we'll give everybody a chance to jump in. As anybody who knows me knows time is important, timeliness is important. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Minervia. And we want to get started as soon as possible. Um, both rooms are open. And um, in a couple of minutes here, we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm just going to do a brief intro start answering some questions and give you guys the opportunity to ask questions as well. So 
Again, Happy New Year, everybody. We all made it through 2020 successfully, hopefully. So while people are jumping in both platforms, I'm excited to have you guys here. Hi, Laura. Yes, we kind of jumped into, hi, Lakeisha. We kind of jumped into 2021 quickly because I didn't even know we were already in the third day of January. Hi, Eric. Ah, uh, thank you, Eric, I appreciate it. Hi, Sunshine. And also, just so that you guys know, for those who are joining us on Facebook, in the Facebook group, the um, Q&A session will actually be saved to the group. So you get an opportunity to check us out and hashtag replay. So definitely do that. I try to, you know, set the sessions up during the time. Hi, Rafika. Um, that everybody can jump in. But you know how that goes. How are you? Good. Thanks for jumping in. I'm not sure how we're going to do with the um, clubhouse, but let's get it. Let's go ahead and jump out there. Right, which is which might be where I went wrong, but we'll, I'll figure it out. Okay, cool. That works. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and get started, okay? All right, so hi again, everybody. I'm Shamika. Um, I am the group creator. I created the NOSA group. Um, I want to say we're going into three years, three years ago, three years ago. And mostly I created the NOSA group from a need. Um, I was a nurse myself, a travel nurse. I've been a nurse for about, I want to say eight years or so, eight, nine years, sounds right, um, at this point. And um, much like some of you guys, I was looking for other opportunities for myself as I started to get a little bit older in the industry and really just decided that I didn't want to continue to do floor nursing. Um, and ideally, entrepreneurship was the route that I thought of, but I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to get started. So um, as a traveler, for those of you guys who travel, you meet nurses everywhere. And sometimes within the travel community, you also meet nurses who are, who you'll meet multiple times. So one of the nurses who ended up being my business partner that I met the second go around, um, we reconnected in New Mexico and we kind of explored this idea of the business that we could create was a staffing agency. You know, we both worked for staffing agencies. There's hundreds of staffing agencies um, throughout the United States. You know, we have a lot of your larger agencies out there that kind of control the market and um and going out there we really jumped in so a lot of people ask well Shamika, how did you get started what was the process what did it look like for the both of us the good thing was we both had previous careers in business for him and then for me i worked for human resources i worked in human resources for the federal government so that really helped us kind of get that push but we did legit just jump in you know we had a business plan we got registered with the state and um, we kind of figured out how to swim. And for us getting started, we definitely had savings, which is you know something that you know for any business that you jump into would be recommended. But we worked our business. So one of our first clients was the company that we worked for, which was Genesis Healthcare. And we were able to talk with the right people because sometimes that's part of the process. But also we were able to um, Move, move along. So when they asked us to get insurance, professional general liability insurance, not quite sure what it was, but we got it. When they asked us to do workers comp, you know, we had an idea of what it was, but we didn't definitely have an idea of the cost, but we got it. So we definitely just kind of plugged along with it and moved through the process. And that was our first exposure to our first client. Now, don't get me wrong. It took us about six months to get to that place. And there was a, a lot of finagling and figuring out like what this could look like or what this might be um, that kind of helped things get started for us. And once we got started for us in our journey, which is a little bit different for some people, we work the business. You know, we're 
most of us here within the group um, here on um, Clubhouse are nurse or healthcare professionals. And if you can work the business, I feel like that's the best way to go. You know, that allows you to save on expenses and costs and any sort of claims or workers' comp if there's an incident and just kind of control your costs early on. And I'm glad that we did it that way because it really allowed us to get an understanding of the industry without taking the big risk. You know, when you deal with employees outside of the industry, ideally, employees in any industry, you want them to be great. They'll give you great interviews. But as far as showing up and not causing issues and things like that, you really don't know. But for the two of us, we really knew how things were going to be. We were able to know that, yes, for him, he worked 60 hours. I worked the back office and figure out things from that perspective. And that was kind of how we ran um, um, initially for the first three months until we hired a our first employee, um, which was a CNA. Um, a lot of people have questions around, and I'll start going into the questions a little bit now, um, cost. You know, for the most part, one of your biggest costs in getting started is your insurance. Um, you have to have insurance to run any business. You want to make sure that you're covering your business from a perspective of liability, um, any medication errors, workers' comp, if your employees get injured on the job. Those things, if you don't make sure that you have those things in place, they end up in lawsuits. You know, they end up in being audited, you know, um, by federal various governmental agency. So you want to have those things as well as you want to have enough money to cover you at the point that you decide to bring on employees. And I think the standard with any industry is to bring on about three months of um, money to cover you or cover your business. So what I tell people is you want to kind of think about like how you um, want to grow. So we were three or four people or six of us for the first six, nine months. But if you want to grow big, which there's definitely opportunity to do that, then you want to make sure that you have the money in place to handle that. And there's a lot of different options out there. I'd say there's way more options out there than they were before. Um, I think the pandemic and Corona has kind of opened the door to, you know, the foundation of how we work here in America from the small business perspective. We're able to understand the impact that we're having. So a lot of money is being placed upon small businesses to be able to um, continue to operate, but kind of get the support and access that maybe for various reasons we didn't have. So I encourage people to look at those angel investors are perfect. A lot of states are pushing that. There's a lot of grants out there um, with the new um, PPP loan, I believe it reopened um, with the new bill that was passed uh, last month. So there's some new monies out there. So really look at those because those options will give you that low interest um, or no interest or you have a longer period of time to pay it back or you have to potentially not pay it back if you meet certain requirements. So I don't know all the ins and outs about the PPP loan, so I'm not going to give you any details. There's plenty of people out there that have it. It's like, you know, SBA's website is a great resource. SCORE is a great resource to go into more details about that. Um, or partnerships, you know. As I mentioned, for me, my journey, I was a partner in our business. So, you know, I brought in my piece, he brought in his piece, and we kind of worked together. Now, don't get me wrong, because partnerships can be challenging, but you also have to really thoroughly think about how you work and how you and what your strengths are. Um, I am a big organization, bring it all together type of person, back office, administrative type of person. My partner was a little bit, you know, more outgoing than me, so he was a great front person. So you kind of have to take a moment to say, if you're going to work with a partnership, you want to make sure that you have not only an idea of what you can bring to the table, but you also want to consider the strengths and weaknesses as well as be clear. You know, we struggled as far as expectations, you know, how we want to run the business. We struggled as well with um, just differences in styles, you know, how we dealt with conflict and stuff like that. And if you don't deal with it prior to starting the business, it will manifest itself within the business. 
So I encourage you, and they can be friends or not friends or what have you, but I encourage you to definitely delve into those things ahead of time so that you're able to really um, manage those issues and maybe bring in another partner and kind of outsource the things that you may have differences on. Um, I touched on the other question. I'm at question three. Do you have to have healthcare experience? No. Um, we have a NOSA in the group who doesn't have healthcare experience and just launched his business back in um, um, October, October of this year. So he did his research, he found me, and I kind of connected with working with him, and he doesn't have healthcare experience. Now, it does benefit you to have it because. Because I've worked on the corporate side of things, and now that I'm on the nursing side of things, healthcare staffing or staffing in healthcare looks totally different than any other industry. There's so many nuances in it that are specific and only specific to the healthcare industry. You know, no other industry has a per diem goal or a travel role where you're doing like 13 week contracts. You know, they may have some variations of that like within IT or engineering or mining, but realistically, a lot of those roles are rolled into longer term contracts or seasonal contracts. But within healthcare, a lot of times um, it takes people, even for me, a little bit of a learning curve to understand the nuances of it um, to really be able to benefit from it. Um, the next question, and I'm on number four, is how long does the process take to launch your agency? A lot of that is dependent upon the person, mostly because everybody is in different places. Um, a lot of times people work and start the process of launching their agency, and sometimes that might take you more time or less time. Uh, I recently spoke with a NOSA, I want to say this weekend, who was in the process of launching her agency and was maybe reaching out to facilities to kind of get a feel for feedback and got the response of, yes, we want to work with your agency. Can you send us over a contract? And she wasn't quite there in the process yet. So sometimes things um, can move faster than you, but I encourage people to be flexible and um you know, take up every opportunity that you can. Definitely don't overextend yourself, but I wouldn't hold back to say, oh, I need to make sure every single duck is in line. Um, but I will say, because Eric mentioned it here on the live, credential management is key. Um, because for us and many other nurses, managing the credentialing process because it's so cumbersome in healthcare is extremely time consuming. So that's one piece of the pie that you really want to be strong at because that can make or break whether or not an applicant can go to work or um, um, any issues as far as delays um, with a person starting. So you want to definitely do that. Uh, the next question is, what is a typical profit margin? So typically the profit margin that I've seen can be between 15 to 20%. And all of this is relative because, like I mentioned earlier, healthcare staffing is very unique. Um, the cost of living, all types of factors, factor in how much you can bill, whether you're billing at a hospital, an LTAC, a long-term care, or if you're at a psych hospital or a rural hospital. So the way that you can bill isn't like an across-the-board billing, like, for California, it looks different than in New York or Georgia or Florida or Texas. So um, I think most people kind of stay around that 15% profit margin. So there's definitely opportunity to make money. Um, and I think we all see if we, um, with the COVID-19, that the business is getting a lot more highlight. It's getting a lot more of a presence. Uh, and... Um, which is a good thing, so the need is there. So like there's millions of nurses in the United States and we still don't have enough nurses to cover the need that we have um, within our healthcare system. So for me, that's definitely not a question as far as is there a need to um, do one if you can profit doing it. Um, so the next couple of questions are kind of related to running the business and it's how do you get contracts? 
So for us, we got our contract through a former employer. And that's where I tell people to start. Start within your network. Start with places that you work. Start where you may know the DON might be your friend or the ADON might be somebody that you know or it's a referral of another friend. Because a lot of times those places will give you your first yes or even your first maybe. Um, other places, I tell everybody and anybody who's about to Medicare.gov, it lists all of the places that you can, that receives Medicare within the United States and all of the facilities, whether it's hospitals, clinics, long-term care facilities, everything is listed there. It's the easiest place to look and it's the most lucrative. And then you have to cold call. You have to, which is a skill some people have to work through, but you have to get out there and sell yourself. You know, for me, part of the sale and part of the um, push that I get people that I mentor and, and work with is you're a healthcare professional or you're a nurse. You are you know everything that's going on. You've probably already done the job in many instances, especially if you work in a supervisory role. So you already have the inside scoop. You already have the knowledge base to talk with them. Just use that. You are able to understand ratios and scheduling and call outs and, you know, on paydays, you know, changes in the schedule. You know, if something's going on, changes in the schedule. So you know that certain places are traveler friendly or have a lot of travelers or have a lot of agency staff. So you want to tap into the needs of the facilities um, from that perspective. Um, also from the business, but you also want to make sure that you're tapping into what's happening. And a great way to see what's happening is go to the job boards. Indeed, Career Builder, Monster, all of those places post that they're looking for people. Those are the places that you need to call. If they're looking for people, nine times out of ten, they're open to agencies. So that's a great starting point. Um, some other places a lot of people have gotten through is through some people have gotten connections through schedulers schedulers are your best friends nine times out of ten they'll give you an inside scoop that you won't have when you're on the outside um supervisors you know these people may not be the first people to make the decision but really all that you need to do is get your foot into the door um once you have your foot in the door then you're at a better place than looking on the outside um, the other things you want to consider is the consistency. So, like I said, the industry is competitive. A lot of us who are jumping out there are jumping out there to compete with larger or mid to large size agencies. So you have to move like you're a mid to large size agency, meaning that you have to cold call 25, 50 calls a day. You know, emails, all of that. That's really where you get your foot in the door of some of these places or your agency um, in front of people that you wouldn't normally be able to do. Um, especially with COVID, you have to get creative. So I tell people, you know, get on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great resource for people. Um, I was just telling, I think it was Angela I was talking to today. Most people on Facebook, um, and some businesses are on Facebook, but a lot of them aren't the employers who are making decisions. The employers who are making decisions are on LinkedIn. We got our second contract from LinkedIn, and it wasn't because we did an outreach. It was just because we had our profile of a staffing agency in New Mexico on LinkedIn. And the lady reached out to use us to staff because we know, which is part of the reason we were there, that state can be hard to fill in certain areas, but if you don't have your presence on social media, especially LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, you're kind of running behind the gate in a lot of ways because um, a lot of people have already gotten the ball rolling. And if you've watched bigger agencies like Crucial and Favorite and um, Total Med and Premier and some of the big agencies, they exclusively for this COVID-19 rush posted on social media. That's becoming the new recruitment. So you want to be where they are. A um, couple of other questions. How to get candidates. 
The best way I tell people, and this is just like a human resources element of it, is be the employer they want to work for. You know, for healthcare staffing agencies, a lot of them offer the same package. They present the same thing. But if you're offering, one, something different, that definitely opens the door, which for us was the same day pay, um, which, is, which is commonplace for people in New Mexico is same day pay. But for somebody in maybe Wisconsin, it's not. So if you come in and that's something that your agency offers, that kind of gives you a step up from the last agency. And then the other thing is you have to be out there. Okay, so Eric is saying, um, Eric's one of the nurses that started, but the group started. He's saying, I acquired a corporate contract for 14 facilities through LinkedIn this year. LinkedIn is, is really, is so valuable. Um, the other thing with employees is seek out friends. Seek out people who are in your inner circle to help you in the beginning stages. Because you'll be surprised at the number of people that will say yes. As well, as you guys already know, and this is a great testament, is join Facebook groups. If your Facebook group isn't out there, if you're in an area where your Facebook group isn't existing, whether you're in a specialty that's special or you're in an area that's special, create your Facebook group. That's what I did. There was no one out there that I found talking about being a nurse and owning a staffing agency, so... I created the group that did it, and that's us, you, and we're, you know, we're all kind of winning in the situation. Um, social media, again, nurses are on social media. I'm on Clubhouse and I'm on Facebook today. Um, not only am I on those platforms to do this, but I'm also on those platforms to see so you want to make sure that you're there to your Facebook business page, your Instagram. Um, I'm also on TikTok. Um, Twitter, LinkedIn, you have to be in those places because sometimes people hear about you not because you have that direct contact with them, they hear about you through a referral or a share of another or second or third party. Um, and then the last couple of questions is, how do I know the right business systems to use? Okay, and then I'll get to the last two. So how do you know the right business systems to use? There's so many out there. Um, the Facebook group, the NOSA group is a great resource that really allows um, people to kind of give reviews on their experiences with different systems. Um, I don't give any either way about it. Um, for us, the system that we use for scheduling, which is a big thing, is no longer in existence. They kind of rolled it into something else, which is Microsoft Teams. But before they had Teams, they actually had a scheduling software, Office 365, um, but they retired it. But a lot of people use T-Sheets, When I Work, um, Chronos, different variations of systems. But if you want to know, you know, people's experiences, it's always great to ask, which a lot of you have done. Um, the other thing is um, payroll systems and things like that. A lot of the big payroll systems out there are Paycheck, ADP, QuickBooks, um, um, Gusto, like some of the payroll systems that have a lot of integration. The main thing I tell people when you think about systems is um, integration. So because you may have a scheduling software and a accounting or payroll system, and then um, maybe something else um, that kind of runs your office, like an Office 365 or a Google, you want to make sure that those that you connect with products or apps that integrate. For instance, um, the NOSA group is one of the ambassadors for QuickBooks. So QuickBooks integrates to a lot of different systems. So that saves you time because you don't want to have to go from one system and do this, then go into the next system and do this, and then go into the next system and do this, just because you won't have the time. You want to spend that time focused on other things, whether it's acquiring contracts or connecting with staff members. Um, so that would be the main thing I would say about the different business systems. You want to make sure that you're connecting to those that talk to each other. Um, and then the last two questions um, I'm going to talk about and then give you guys a chance to ask questions is what would I do differently and what would I recommend for new notes getting started? 
So one of the things I would do differently um, is probably more planning. Um, I think if we had done more planning, we would have saved ourselves some headache, which of course may not, you know, we never know what the future holds. But um, more planning, um, I think one of the things that benefited me even creating the group was um, really networking. You know, networking with other NOSAs, mentorship is big. You want to you don't want to recreate things. There's already at least 2,000 other people, if not more, doing it. So you want to be able to connect with them. But you also want to be mindful that as a small business owner, sometimes your time and ability to provide mentorship or support to other businesses can be challenging. But those are the things that I would um, probably do differently. Um, I've gotten the opportunity to really be able to um, see some of that happen within the group, networking off the line and stuff like that. Um, and then the last one, what would I recommend Nunosis to do when getting started? So these are a couple of my own personal recommendations and a lot of it is based on my own experience and what I've seen. So I would make sure that you have a business plan. So I'm going to get to the questions. This is the end, guys. I'm going to get to the questions now. Um, we want to have a plan. And not like a plan for like this year. You want to have a three to five year business plan now. If you're launching now, have it together now. What does what does your business look like? What does it feel? Who's in place? What are they in place doing? How are they working? Are you in an office space? Are you working from home? Are you, if you're doing payroll funding, are you still funding your business through a payroll funding company? Are you self-funded? You know, where are you going to look for monies? Where are you going to look for employees? How are you going to market your agency? And another thing within creating that business plan, you want to make sure that you have a niche. You want something about your agency that stands apart. Um, there's so many agencies that kind of are duplicating what's already out there. But I think the agencies, as we move forward into 2021, that are really going to stand out are going to have like specialties. You know, there are nurses in the group that specialize in labor and delivery. They specialize in cardiac, dialysis. That makes an impact because not only do you know the healthcare staffing industry, but you know this specific industry. As we all know, the long-term care nurse can't just go over and work cardiac or work ICU. You have to have specific skill sets, knowledge base, and experience. Um, some other things that I would recommend to nurses to do when getting started is do your research. Um, my experience and how I got started is different than Rafika's and Latasha's experience when they got started. So everybody's journey is different. And because every state operates a little bit differently, some of that factors into it. So make sure that you're doing your research to get the accurate answer from the proper resource. And it's not to say that you shouldn't ask, but it's more to say that you want to make sure that you're comfortable and confident in the answer that you're receiving. And then a couple of last few things is don't spread yourself thin. Really focus and hone in on an area and become the authority become the agency of choice in your area before branching out. Um, don't become discouraged. We've all been in the place of, I'm not getting results, it's not happening for me. You know, people aren't getting back to me, they keep telling me no, we've all been there. But the persistency and consistency, um, it really does pay off over time. For people who have gotten contracts, who I've worked with, um, or people even within the NOSA group, some people have gotten it in 90 days, but some people have also gotten it in um, 60 days, 30 days, but you still have to put that work in. And the other thing with getting contracts to, you want to make sure that you diversify your portfolio. So if you only work in vendor management systems, you need to get yourself some direct contracts. If you only have direct contracts, you need to think about you know, maybe a vendor management system or some federal and state local contracts that are longer term that provide a little bit more consistent monies because people are doing really great with healthcare staffing now, but that can always change. So you don't want to put all your eggs in one um, bucket. And when creating your plan, I would encourage you to timeline everything. So a lot of people, when you get started, you start one business, you're like, okay, well, I can start another business. You can, but you really want to think about, is this the best time to do it? I'm a prime example of that. 
because the stuff that I talk about, I typically have experience. So in addition to being a NOSA, I'm also a CPR instructor. I'm also a CNA instructor. Those aren't things that I'm actively doing at this time, but there are things that I've done in the past that I've you know, dibbled and dabbled in. And you want to really consider, are these things that complement my current business? And are these things that are going to help me grow my business? Or if you decide to, you know, move it in a different direction, as I know some people want to start CNA schools and stuff like that. So I am done answering the 10 frequently asked questions. Thank you guys for being patient with me. And I want to get to some of your questions as well. And um, give um, Murphy and Latasha an opportunity to kind of share their experience here on Clubhouse. And I'm going to just answer a couple of these questions here on Facebook Live that I see um, first. Uh, okay, okay, that's a good question. Um, okay, so can you touch on the difference between independent contractor and 1099 employee versus W-2? Um, so I'm going to say this, it's been answered, it comes up a lot. Um, we only do W-2. Um, I tell people I've worked for agencies that have done 1099 and for us, 1099 wasn't an option primarily. And please let me say this as a caveat, I am not a legal professional or a tax professional, but primarily, which people have gone back and forth on, which is, you know, it's your business, it's your decision is that one of the key roles of an independent contractor is that they can work independently. And in my experience as a nurse, you are typically, nurse on the floor, you are working under supervision. So that's kind of how I'm gonna answer that question, Lucy, um, no, Imani, and um, hopefully at some point this year we'll have a tax professional come in and kind of give more details, but we haven't done it. I know some people have tried it, and have had issues with it um, because the uh, employees are working under supervision, whether it's a nurse, CNA, tech, everybody for the most part within healthcare work under supervision. Um, um, Lakeisha asked the question, do you recommend getting the contacts then hire staff? Okay, contracts then hire staff, okay. So I recommend getting the contracts first and this is why, um, and I've had a lot of people struggle or kind of uh, feel like um, it's out of order, it could be challenging. I say get the contracts because you can get a contract, but it doesn't mean you have to staff it. Now, I'm not saying don't staff it, but if you get a contract and you don't staff it, that's okay. A facility will work with you because they sign a one-year contract with you. Do you want to start staffing as soon as possible to show that you actually have staff? Yes. Most facilities aren't going to ask you, do you have 150 nurses ready to work? They don't ask anybody that. You say you're a staffing agency, you have nurses, they can work, that's fine. But if you go about getting employees and hiring employees, as a nurse myself, and you guys let me know if I'm wrong, I'm not waiting for you to get a contract. And by doing it in the other order, you will have typically spent money because it doesn't cost any money to email a facility over a contract. But to hire staff, you have spent money, you know, received documents, exerted time for somebody who two weeks, you know, two weeks or 30 days, if it's 30 or 60 days, has moved on to the next agency. And also you want to take into account that a lot of um, healthcare professionals work with multiple agencies. Um, so getting, hiring them first can slow you down. But it can be a bit of a double-edged sword, Lakeisha. Because then you have the contract and you might have a facility that's like, oh, we need somebody ASAP. Trust me, every facility needs somebody ASAP. Yesterday, um, they want you to hire 10 people and things of that nature. And you, in the beginning, you're always going to have that seesaw. But you really want to be realistic with them. And I always tell people, tell them, I'll do what I, I see what I can do. You know, let me check. I'll see what I can do. I'll reach out to some people. Because there's nothing wrong with telling them. You'll see, and if ultimately you're not able to do it, then no. That typically, in my experience, has never resulted in somebody 
saying they don't want to work for your agency anymore because most facilities work with multiple agencies. Um, okay, Lucy. I'm going to zoom on here. Um, okay, so Lucy's... Oh, I'm going to do one more question and I'll come on to that. Lucy's asking about um, the vendor management system and then moving to other states. All that I would tell people is prior to moving to other states to staff for vendor management system or direct contracts, I would make sure that you've really exhausted all your states because when you move to other states, you have additional taxes, business taxes, you have additional expenses. Um, within the vendor management system, you can staff, but you want to take that into account. So career staff is just one. There's hundreds of vendor management systems. So I would just look into those things um, prior to moving um, to other states. So I'm going to take a couple of questions from some of the people on Clubhouse, and then I'll share it with you guys here on Facebook. So feel free to drop your questions in the comment section, um, and we'll keep things moving along. So does anybody here on Clubhouse have any questions? Or Rafik or Latasha, do you guys have any input, any insights you guys want to share? Right, so um, so for you guys on Facebook, Latasha was mentioning, which is great, that it's, in, it's important or it's key to make sure that if you are able to get some contracts with one facility, that that really opens the door for sister facilities. Um, I guess an example would be uh, if Genesis or some other small facility had you know, facility A, and then across town they had, you know, sister companies B, C, and D, you know, kind of establishing yourself as a good agency within one facility really opens the door for you to be able to get contracts with the other facilities as well. Um, so they have a couple... Yes, you're right, Rafika. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to raise your hand. And I have a couple of more questions here on the um, Facebook that I'll share with you guys. Um, how do you get, how do you secure government contracts? Uh, Leah, it, it can be complicated. The main thing I will say as a woman or minority owned or both it's to your benefit to get the the SBA designation as a minority owned business, woman owned business, veteran owned business. Um, if that's where you are, prior to starting the process of securing contracts for the federal government, I'm assuming you mean federal, um, because that gives you preference. Um, because some contracts out there are specific, and I think some of the actual COVID contracts are specifically designated for minority, women-owned, veteran-owned businesses. So I would work towards doing that. And I think you could do that through um, sba.gov. Uh, Sheila on here has a question about which back office company takes between 7 and 10% without a year contract, excluding... Um, I'm not sure about that answer, Sheila. Every back office is different and um, just for clarification purposes, there is a difference between a back office and a payroll funding company. Amanda did a, a video about it, so she can probably give you a little bit more insight. Okay, so 
Okay, so we got a question here on Clubhouse, so I'm going to bear with me. Okay. Hi, Timmy. Is it Timmy? Timmy, how are you? Good. So what's your question? Um, actually, Timmy, I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Rafika and Latasha to give some feedback because, um, so Timmy's question is a recommendation for a back office or funding, um, because we didn't use them. So I don't really have any well, hands-on experience about it, but they can definitely give, um, their insight. A couple of questions here. Um, Teresa has a question about getting started policies and procedures. I think it depends when it when you want to do policy and procedures, if you want to pay for a consultant. I will say most policy and procedures are consistent, but you want to make sure that somebody gets a look at them so that they're able to make sure that they meet any state-specific requirements. So from like a human resources perspective, you have your federal laws when it comes to employment, and then you have some state-specific laws. So, example, um, in the state of California, after eight hours, you're, you can receive overtime. There's really not any other states that do that either. So, I would check into that and... Um, see when you're dealing with any consultants, see whether or not they've worked with them as well. Um, what checks do you do? Do you need on a new hire? Are COVID checks required? Um, Okay, so do you guys have any other questions? I think, um, like Rafika was saying, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand. Um, we have a couple of questions for people here on the Facebook page. Um, and one of the questions was, what types of checks do you do on new hires? Are there COVID checks required? Um, so I would say traditionally you're kind of doing your background drug screen for healthcare professionals. You also have to do TB, Hep B. Uh, I have no idea what things are going to look like um, for next year come flu season or COVID season or whatever they call it. Um, but for the most part, most of the facilities we've worked with do require COVID testing. Some have changed it from weekly to bi-weekly. Um, I think they're still offering, most states are still offering free testing. Um, we do have a couple of members in the group that are doing their own testing, um, but it's still free testing out there. I kind of, I don't know with the vaccine coming, how exactly they're going to figure that out um, with regards to COVID and um, testing for that, but you kind of traditionally do the same process for new hires um, across the board. It's pretty consistent as far as um, what you would require of them. Um, 
Okay, yes, I'll share the link for the um, video for Amanda. Okay. Um, can you touch on cost? Okay, so Amanda's saying um, some of the challenges she's seen with some of the people is um, with regards to cost. So there's a lot of cost to factor in. So I can touch on that a little bit. And some of the costs that you want to consider are not only like the cost of paying your employees, but you also have to consider payroll taxes. So as employers, you have to pay payroll taxes. You have to pay Medicare and FICA. So those are all taxes that employees pay, but employers also have to pay it as well. Um, you also want to factor in any sort of costs or expenses that you have with regards to systems that you're using, whether those are monthly or quarterly um, payments that you're making, insurance. Um, on average, I've seen for all the insurance that you need to get started, which would be your professional, general, and workers comp, it ranged from 5000 a year to up to 10000 a year. Um, and those aren't things that you can necessarily work around, but those are things that you really want to um, make sure that you're um, taking in consideration when creating your plan, your business plan, your budget. And you also want to factor it into your bill rates because those are costs that every employer passes on to employees, even though we don't see it. Um, so you want to make sure that you take that into consideration as well. So another question is, what are good mobile apps do you use for quick employee application and uploading required documents um, from Lucy? So one of the mobile apps out there um, that a lot of members use is Kamana, um, Kamana Health. And um, they're nurse owned as well, nurse co-owned. And they've done a great job of kind of making sure to incorporate you know, some of the challenges as well as making sure to create a secure platform. Um, I know recently there was another alert put out that some of the personal information of healthcare professionals from one of the bigger agencies had been compromised. And when I think about it, as a nurse myself, I hadn't given much consideration as to how I share my you know, social security card or my passport when recruiters call for jobs that I'm interested in. So one of the great things is that um, Kamana is really tied into the needs of nurses from, you know, from their own experience from a nurse perspective, but also some of the challenges that business owners are having. So I would check them out. I'll drop their information below or if somebody's um, in the group, they can share it as well. Um, or if John's here, he can share it too. Uh, so exceptional nurse staffing is saying one of her biggest challenges is securing a contract. That's everybody's challenge. Um, it, it's it, it's the bit it's a challenge I think for more people in that in a couple of different areas. Um, and definitely feel free to drop your questions because I'm gonna wrap up, guys. But the biggest challenge is how you go about it. So. And then another challenge is your level of comfort. So for instance, if you're an individual who may not be comfortable with cold calling, you could get someone to kind of start the process for you. But I encourage you to reach out to people, connect with people that can help you build up that skill set, um, that salesmanship, the marketing. Um, because even though you may be able to have somebody call on your behalf from a phone call or email perspective, what if you're in an event or what if you are um, on a LinkedIn page or you're out or something like that and people want to know more about your agency and are interested in a contract. So you really want to take the time to hone in on that skill set so that you're ready at any time. Um, I think one of the NOSA members said a scheduler at her church reached up to, you know, reached out to her at church when she was sharing about the fact that she was starting her staffing agency. So... You know, there's some ways around it, but it's, you know, certain skill sets when you're trying to secure contracts that you really want to perfect and um, or 
Um, some people have hired other people to do it. Um, I feel like you're the best person to sell your business um, to people, but everything is different for different people. And um, you want to be persistent. You want to be persistent and consistent, as well as look for feedback. I'm always big on getting feedback to see, hey, maybe it's your approach. Maybe it's the words you're using. Maybe that's impacting the outcome that you're having. So you always want to, you know, kind of, hey, do I need to work on my skills? Is it how, I, how I'm going about it? Or are there things that I specifically need to improve upon to kind of get me the results that I'm looking for? Um... Um, so what's, oh, okay, so Colette, the address is out there, um, for Kamana, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll tag you in it. Um, yes. So what's a good bill rate for, um, North Carolina? Um, yeah, you would have to, it, yeah, I was going to say, um, Rafika said it depends. We would need way more information to even reply to that. But if there's any nurses out there that want to connect with exceptional nurse staffing and kind of give her an idea, feel free to do so. But there's no way to um, be able to say. Now, I would... Exactly. And then, of course, you also have to factor in COVID. So, to be honest with you guys, the rates are all over the place. Rafika was saying it depends, and you really want to know your worth and um, do your research. Um, and it really depends. You know, some rates are COVID rates, some rates are not. Um, I will say down south, the rates are typically lower, the West Coast is usually higher. The Northeast is usually higher, um, kind of on average. But right now, the rates are everywhere. I'm going to guess, and you guys can chime in and kind of say um, what you think. I feel like the rates might stabilize in the summer. I am an advocate of saying the COVID rates will go away. Um, so when the COVID pay rates go away, the COVID bill rates will go away as well. So I would definitely make sure that you prepared yourself and your business for that. Um but a lot of that will depend on, you know, how things go um, with the vaccine and everything related to that. So, uh, oh, okay. Okay, so Tina Whipple is asking, how do you find rates for New York? Can we ask to see their contracts they have or had? Uh, so I'm going to take the last part of your question, Tina. Um, Rafika, maybe you can reach out to her to answer the first part. Uh, I've never had a facility share their contracted rates. Um, but it, it may not hurt to ask. I would be curious um, as to, with getting that information, was your would your intention be to match the rate? Uh, so, but I haven't really, um, come across, um, doing that. Okay. If you guys have any last questions, feel free to drop them below, please. I'm going to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Tina, let's talk offline. Okay, and Rafika's saying that, yes, when she's worked in the school system, they did share the rates. I think for state and local, they have set rates, so you are able to get access. Okay. All right, guys, so if you guys don't have anything else, I'm going to log out. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. It's been great. Um, definitely check us out on all our social media platforms, guys, at T-H-E-N-O-S-A-G-R-P. Um, definitely share any social media here as well. Um, other than that, thanks again. And you can always check us out in hashtag replay. So thank you. Have a good night, everybody.